In this video, we're going to discuss the different gas laws that you need to know for LAMCA. The first gas law, and perhaps the most important one, is the ideal gas law. PV equals nRT. This equation is very helpful for doing a whole bunch of different types of calculations for LAMCAT. So we have P, the pressure, V, volume, N, the moles of gas, R, the gas constant. This is equal to 0 0.08 liters atmospheres per mole Kelvin. And then we have temperature T. And of course, as I referenced in the previous video, make sure when you're doing calculations with temperature that you're using the Kelvin scale. All right, now this ideal gas law you will use in a number of questions where you just have to plug in the different values to solve for one of these different variables. However, we often see simplified versions of the ideal gas laws with these other gas laws that you might have heard about before. Boyle's Law, Charles' Law, and Avogadro's Law. So let's take a look at this. Boyle's Law is looking at gases under conditions where the moles of gas as well as the temperature is constant. So we're gonna say here, N is constant. We're also gonna say that T is constant. So in this case, with our ideal gas law, if the moles of gas N and the temperature is constant, then this whole right side is a constant. So what that tells us is the product of pressure and volume is a constant. And if that's the case, if you want to increase the pressure, then you have to decrease the volume and vice versa. So the important relationship here is essentially to know that Boyle's law tells us that pressure is inversely related to the volume when the moles of gas and temperature is constant. Now, intuitively, this should make sense because if you increase the volume of your container, your gas molecules now have to travel a larger distance to collide from one wall to another wall. So that means you will have fewer collisions against the walls of the container, which gives you a lower pressure. So this is the relationship. Pressure is inversely related to volume. We often see this in an equation form as P1V1 equals P2V2. So you'll likely want to be familiar with this equation as well. Our next law is Charles' law. Charles' law is looking at the ideal gas law when the moles of gas is constant and when the pressure is constant. So in this case, if we look at our equation, if pressure is constant and the moles of gas is constant, then you have volume being directly proportional to the temperature. So this is the important relationship here. The volume is directly proportional to temperature. And again, this makes sense. If you increase the temperature of your gas molecules, your gas molecules have more kinetic energy, they're moving faster, so there are more and stronger collisions against the walls of the container. That would want to increase the pressure. However, a requirement here is the pressure has to be constant. So essentially what happens is when you raise the temperature, the increased pressure causes the volume to expand. And when the volume expands, that lowers the pressure. So overall, there is no change in the pressure. But as a consequence of increasing the temperature, you do increase the volume at the same time. So explaining why these two are directly proportional. Similarly, we do have an equation for this. V1 over T1 is equal to V2 over T2. All right, so let's take a look at our last law over here, Avogadro's law. Avogadro's law is looking at situations where the temperature is constant and the pressure is constant. In this case, if pressure is constant and temperature is constant, 
then we can see here that volume is directly proportional to the moles of gas. So that's the important relationship here. Volume is directly proportional to the moles of gas. And this should make sense because we said previously when you're at STP, one mole of gas occupies a volume of 22.4 liters. This is true regardless of the identity of the gas, meaning if you have one mole of helium gas, one mole of water vapor, or one mole of nitrogen gas, they all have the same volume of 22.4 liters. At the same time, if you have two moles of gas, you have twice that volume. If you have three moles of gas, you have three times the volume of 22.4 liters. So that explains how the volume and number of moles is directly proportional when pressure and temperature is constant. And similarly, we do have an equation, V1 over N1 is equal to V2 over N2. And this is another relationship that you want to know for lambda count. Now, the last thing I want to talk about is I have mentioned several times that for temperature, it's important to use the Kelvin scale. So I do want to take a look at a quick example. So in our example, let's say we have a situation where a gas has a volume of one liter at a temperature of, let's say, what's a good temperature? 27 degrees Celsius. The question is, if pressure and the moles of gas are constant, what is the volume at 127 degrees Celsius. All right, so let's think about this. In this situation, we have a gas with a volume of one liter at a temperature of 27 degrees Celsius. I want to know what happens to the volume if we increase the temperature to 127 degrees Celsius, but the pressure and the moles are kept constant. So. If you think about it, the situation pressure where pressure and moles are constant, this is essentially looking at Charles' law. So Charles' law tells us that if pressure and moles are constant, then volume is directly proportional to temperature. So in that case, if you look at the temperature, you might think, hey, 27 Celsius to 127 degrees Celsius, that it's almost increasing essentially by a factor of five, right? You can round this to 25, you can say this is 125. So you might think, hey, my temperature increased by a factor of five, so my volume must also increase by a factor of five to five liters. But again, that is incorrect, and that's because temperature calculations should be done in Kelvin. So let's just take a look at our equation here. We have V1 over T1 equals V2 over T2. So we can start first by writing this equation, V1 over T1 equals V2 over T2. We want to solve for the final volume, so we can rearrange the equation to get V2 is equal to V1 times T2 over T1. We can then plug in the information that we have. The volume is one liter. T2 is 127 degrees Celsius. We want to use Kelvin. So to convert this to Kelvin, you add 273. That's going to give us 400 Kelvin. Same thing with 27 degrees Celsius. We want to add 273. That's going to give us 300 Kelvin. If you look at this equation now, you can see you have one times 400 over 300. That's essentially four thirds. So what we can see here is that our volume increased from one liter to four thirds liter. And we were able to get this correct value by using the Kelvin scale. All right, so these are the different gas laws you need to know for LAMCAT, and we've provided you with an example of how to use these gas laws to do calculations for LAMCAT.